Minister Richard Fuller. Thank you yeah. very much, uh, Madam, Madam, uh, Madam Deputy uh, Speaker. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to uh, close this debate on behalf of, of the government. And let me uh, begin by thanking all honourable members for their contributions during the course of this uh, relatively uh, short debate. Uh, I think it's fair to say none of us came here expecting to find a perfect consensus. I didn't, but it was rather pleasing to have this measure welcomed by the opposition spokesperson, the member for the Ilford North, the SNP spokesperson, the member for Gordon, the Liberal Democrat spokesperson, the member for Richmond Park, and by the MP, uh, the member of Parliament for Glen Rothes. So thank you to all those honourable members for their support uh, from the uh, opposition. It is clear uh, that the purpose of the Chancellor's Growth Plan is to improve lives across the country over the long term. Growing the economy must be our guiding mission, and with this government it is, through lower taxes, through improved infrastructure, by supporting skilled employment, by removing barriers to investment, by getting the housing market moving, by making Britain an even better place to do business, and by ensuring that people who earn money keep more of their own money so they can make their own decisions, and that also includes our businesses. And I, I heard from the opposition spokesperson that their plan really comprises uh, two uh, aspects. The first of all, uh, that it is the government, it is the uh, Labour, uh, that should be the ones that decide what is the right way to achieve growth in this country rather than the wealth creators and the businesses. It's Labour uh, that would wish to make those decisions on behalf of, of all of us. And many of us on this side know where that sort of central planning uh, ends up. And the second part uh, was that those with the broadest shoulders uh, should bear the burden. But I would just war warn honourable members to just measure how broad their shoulders are, because my fear is, Madam Deputy Speaker, that it isn't really the broad shoulders, it's basically anyone with shoulders. And, and my point would be this, the starting position where we start on this for, for Labour's plan. In 2022-23, this year, Madam Deputy Speaker, the top 1% of the income distribution are estimated to receive 13% of all income, but already they pay 30% of all income tax liabilities. 1% paying 30% of all income tax liabilities. The bottom 50% of the income distribution are estimated to pay only 8.3% of all income tax. So when Labour says that they want to fund it through general taxation, they aren't looking out for the 1% to pay, Madam Deputy Speaker. They're looking out for people on average income and on low incomes to pay for their plans. And we on this side do not think that is the right way to achieve, uh, to achieve, uh, to achieve growth. Uh, in a second, I'll come to the Honourable Gentleman if, if I have time. I would like to spend a little bit of time, if I could, on the speech by the Liberal Democrat uh, spokesperson, who I thought gave a, a very good speech and raised some important broader uh, issues. I was, I was uh, interested in her views, uh, as she welcomed a bit about some of the costs that have been paid uh, by, by people and by, by businesses. I think she used the numbers of 2.5 and 3.8 billion that have been uh, paid as part of this, and that, that really underlines the point about why this, this measure will make such an important contribution to put money back into the, household, into the pockets of households now as they face the winter crisis and to the hands of, of businesses as they make their investment decisions. She, she kindly mentioned about her past uh, as, a, as an accountant. Uh, not everyone would necessarily volunteer uh, their past as, as an accountant, and about some of the disruption. Can I assure the Honourable Lady that I personally have spoken, as indeed the HMRC have, to software payroll companies to assess what the level of disruption has been and whether this additional change will cause further disruption. And in my conversations, with them, they have said that there has been minimal cost to date and that this reversal will have minimal cost to them. Now, obviously, that's just a selection, talking to software payroll software companies, there will be others, but I think I can give her some assurance that it is, it is less than perhaps she might feel. Yes, I'm happy to give away. Um, I thank the Minister for that assurance, um, but I just wanted to raise that the point I was making is not so much about the technical implementation, uh, which I, uh, I, I totally take his point on that about you know, it's a software change. The point I was making was more about uh, uh, headcount forecast and how many staff they can afford to take on and changing the amount of national insurance contribution that businesses need to make has a material impact on those forecasts and will have had an impact on how many new jobs have been created in this time. Yes, that, that's, that's an interesting point. I, it, it probably is worth, worthy of further investigation. But on, on sort of first sight, on the day where we have announced that the, the country has uh, more vacancies than we have unemployed, and the level of unemployment is a, a, a very long-term low, one would think, one would think that, that that particular impact hasn't been so significant. But it is an issue that's worthy of further investigation. I think the other point that she made 
uh, particularly around the impact of discharges from hospitals. You talked about our own hospital that may, may be having on, on social care. I think that's a, that's a relevant point, and I'm sure that that will be taken up by uh, my right honourable friend, uh, the Secretary of State uh, for the Department of Health and, and Social Care. The Honourable Lady, the member for Liverpool Riverside, raised the point, as others did, to, to ensure that I confirmed specifically and directly in this, whether the changes to this levy will change the funding as previously announced, and I can give assurance that this levy change makes no difference to, to, to the funding uh, of uh, as she outlines. And so uh, there are other points that were made, and we will speak to more, I think, as we move to the committee stage. But, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, my right honourable friend, the Chief Secretary, made the point that the reversal of this levy is, mu is part of a much greater sum, and above all, it is about achieving the sustainable growth this country needs and deserves. That is our mission as a government, and it is the purpose of the bill, and I commend it to the House. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> the question is that the bill be now read a second time. As many as are of that opinion say aye. 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 On the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it.